Okay, uh, so let us get started with today's class. Uh, so, uh, if we uh, recall what we are doing, you know, like we were looking at the controller block, right? So, that is what uh, we started off yesterday. So, we uh, looked at the controller uh, as an entity to which we give the error as the input signal and uh, we obtain the control input as the output, right? And uh, the controller transfer function was C of s, so U of s was taken to be C of s times uh, uh, E of s, okay? Uh, uh, so, we discussed like uh, three uh, uh, types of uh, I would say you know like fundamental controllers right the building blocks. So, what we called as a proportional control, integral control and derivative control ok. And uh, if you uh, go and look at practical implementation of derivative control right which which is what we stopped with yesterday you know like uh, you will see that in many cases you know like they would use. Uh, uh, a block like K D E S divided by uh, T S plus 1, right. So, if you uh, even check this out, right. So, that 1 by T S 1, T S plus 1 would act like a low pass filter, right. So, to filter out the uh, noise signals, right. So, that we uh, discussed yesterday, right. Because one limitation of uh, derivative control is that it can accidentally amplify <coughs> uh, low amplitude high frequency noise. Okay, that comes up during practical implementation. Okay, so that's a that's an issue with derivative control, right? So for that purpose, you know, like uh, typically the signal is filtered out, right? Okay. So let's uh, continue from here. You know, like uh, by and large, you know, like uh, uh, one starts with proportional control. Okay, and uh, if things do not work out, you know, like then what we do is that like uh, we try out proportional. Uh, and an integral control, okay. So, what is called as a PA controller, okay. Uh, so, uh, if proportional controller, you know, like for some reason does not work, you know, we can try the integral block alone, but uh, we would as we discussed, the, uh, if I use the integral block alone, you know, like I am going to introduce a pole, open loop pole at the origin, right. That is something which we discussed yesterday. So, we will see later that you know like if I if I introduce an open loop pole at the origin you know like there are going to be some difficulties okay in designing the closed loop system and making it stable. Uh, so, consequently one alternative is to use a PA controller and then we will see that you know like uh, how it helps in uh, solving that issue right. So, as the name indicates a PA controller uh, essentially has two components right the control input uh, is essentially the sum of uh, the proportional part and the uh, integral part okay so that that's what it is in place okay so uh, as as essentially uh, one can interpret from its name right so consequently the uh, transfer function is controller transfer function is going to be k p plus k i by s so this can be rewritten as k p s plus k i divided by s okay so, uh, we see that immediately uh, we uh, introduce an open loop pole uh, at 0, but at the same time we introduce an open loop 0 at minus k i by k p. Okay. So, uh, you see that the controller block will introduce uh, this open loop pole and open loop 0 right. So, as far as uh, the P A controller is concerned right. So, this is the transfer function of a P A controller ok. So, that is the uh, controller transfer function ok and uh, we can see that uh, uh, this is just the addition of both blocks ok. So, it, it, it will basically combine the features of both uh, P and I ok. So, that is the uh, advantage. And uh, uh, at this juncture, you know, like uh, there is something called as a uh, controller parameter space, okay. Like so, uh, uh, so what is this uh, controller parameter space? So, uh, or control gain uh, region, okay. It, it indicates, uh, it is used to indicate uh, the feasible region, right. So, the feasible uh, region 
or regions okay, of the controller uh, gains uh, to achieve uh, closed loop stability and performance. Okay. So, that is what uh, we would call as the controller parameter space. It is just a graphical representation okay, like of what uh, happens. Okay. So, uh, in, in the case of just uh, P, I and D, okay, there is only one controller parameter, right? So, that is a real number, right? So, this controller parameter space will be a uh, 1D space, okay? like uh, essentially it will be a one dimensional plot. Okay. So, if you want to have a graphical representation, let me scroll up, I will come down. So, in this case, the controller parameter space is just going to be uh, uh, a line where you indicate you know what are the potential values of uh, k p right. Similarly, you know like if, if we deal with the integral controller you know like once again uh, the controller parameter space is going to be a line you know like uh, uh, you know like where you just indicate what values of k i will uh, satisfy uh, stability and performance requirements of the closed loop system obviously. And with the d controller you know like once again we plot k d right because that is a controller parameter or controller gain in that particular uh, case right. But when we come to P i what happens this controller parameter space becomes uh, two dimensional. Okay. So, what we need to do is that we need to plot uh, K p and K i okay, to do the job. Okay. So, uh, essentially uh, it this becomes a two dimensional plot wherein like we uh, graphically represent what are all the feasible values of KP and KI right that would uh, achieve closed loop stability and uh, performance ok. So, that is something which we are going to do right ok. So, that is what we call as a controller parameter space ok. And uh, the next uh, controller which is typically used uh, by and large you know derivative control is hardly used alone uh, due to the uh, uh, reasons that we uh, discussed. Okay. So, by and large it is combined at least with a proportional controller and uh, typically <coughs> used. So, uh, the control input in this case once again, uh, I am sorry what is it? Controller parameter space is just an uh, what to say a graphical in uh, what to say visualization of uh, the feasible regions of the control gains which will achieve closed loop stability and performance. We'll, we are going to plot it. Okay. I have just introduced the term to you. Okay. So, if I ask you to essentially construct the controller parameter space in a problem, you need to essentially uh, draw a plot and show what ranges of uh, these control gains will achieve closed loop stability and performance. We will do it. Okay. We are going to look at it. Okay. I will come there right. So, closed loop stability is something which we have already discussed right. So, closed loop stability means I want my closed loop poles to be in the left of complex plane. Okay. Question is that like what values of the controller gains would do the job right. So, that is closed loop stability and once again closed loop performance would be specified by various parameters that we have learned time constant, settling time, peak overshoot, uh, rise time and so on right. So, once again we will see how that is reflected in the design process. Okay, we are going to look at all those uh, concepts. Okay, uh, so uh, a PD controller, uh, as the name suggests, you know, like has these two blocks, uh, proportional plus derivative. Okay, uh, so consequently, the uh, controller transfer function is just the sum of the two individual uh, uh, what to say controller uh, transfer functions of proportional and derivative control. Okay. So, we can immediately see that this introduces an open loop 0 at minus k p by k d. Okay. So, please remember you know like why am I calling it as open loop 0 you know like uh, let us let us go back and ensure that all of us uh, uh, what to say uh, uh, recall it the open loop transfer function is going to be g of s times h of s right if you recall from what we defined earlier. So, open loop uh, transfer function right is g of s times h of s 
so that's going to be C of s, P of s times H of s, right? So you can see that it's the product of these three uh, transfer function blocks, right? So immediately, uh, depending on what plant transfer function is something which we have already looked at, right? Feedback path transfer function H of s typically given to us, right? We know the, what it is. So controller transfer function is what we choose, right? And depending on what is chosen, right? So the uh, uh, the open loop poles and open loop zeros will be affected, right? So immediately we see that you know like depending on the choice of my controller transfer function, I may introduce certain open loop poles and open loop zeros. Okay, that's why I'm writing it like this, right? So in the case of a pure derivative control. Uh, please note that you know like uh, we are introducing an open loop 0 at, at 0, <coughs> right, correct. So in the case of integral control, we are introducing an open loop pole at 0. In proportional control, we are not introducing any open loop pole or open loop 0, okay. So that is what we are doing, right. So, uh, essentially uh, in the case of uh, uh, proportional plus derivative control, we introduce an open loop 0 at minus k p by uh, k d, okay. So that is a proportional control. So once again, if I want to plot the controller parameter space, it will be a 2 D plot, right, with k p and k d, okay, being the two axes, right. So that is what will happen with uh, p d control, okay. Then in general, we can combine all the three blocks, right? Proportional, uh, integral, and uh, derivative. Okay, which is called as PID in general. Okay, so so what is a PID controller? As the name indicates, uh, U of t is going to be equal to KP uh, E of t plus k i integral 0 to t e tau d tau plus k d d e d t, okay. So that is what is a p i d, okay. It is just the sum of the uh, three blocks, right. So consequently, uh, the controller transfer function will be k p plus k i by s plus k d s square. Okay. So, we can immediately see that this introduces uh, two open loop zeros, right, which depend on, on the value of values of k p, k a and k d, right, because once again you can see that uh, the, uh, the numerator polynomial of this transfer function is of order 2, right, denominator polynomial is order 1, okay, please remember that, right, once you take LCM and uh, uh, calculate it, right. And uh, so consequently there are going to be two open loop zeros that are going to be uh, introduced and uh, uh, it introduces an open loop pole at the origin, right. So that is the uh, uh, PID controller in general, okay. So uh, now there are three parameters to design, right. So KP, KI and KD, right. So the complexity keeps on increasing, you know, please remember each of these parameters is a real number, you know, that can vary between minus infinity to plus infinity, you know, like we will see that that is this is going to be very difficult, right. If I want to figure out uh, in a three dimensional space, right, what will be the feasible region uh, that would essentially uh, work for me, right, for my control design, okay. So the complexity keeps on increasing. Of course, I combine the benefits of the three blocks, but then there is a pri price to pay, right, uh, due to that. Okay, so that is what uh, is uh, PID control, okay, in general. So uh, we would be focusing on uh, these blocks for most uh, most of our discussions, you know, like for the simple reason is that like almost uh, uh, a overwhelming majority of controllers that are used in practical applications, you know, like belong to this uh, class of PID controllers, okay. And uh, later on, you know, like if time permits, we will also look at other type of uh, uh, controllers, uh, what are called as uh, lag compensators, lead compensators, and lag lead compensators, and all. Okay, so we would come to those uh, controllers later on, right? So, but then, like uh, by and large, we are going to lo uh, look at uh, PID control, and we'll learn how to 
design such controllers. Okay. So, now let us let me start uh, what to say doing some examples that will also motivate the topics which are going to come ahead. Right. So, let us uh, do a few examples and then like we will uh, uh, what to say uh, discuss them fine. So, any questions about uh, uh, the at least the uh, uh, realization of the PID control? It is pretty simple right. So, that is we discuss the building blocks you just combine the building blocks you know like uh, as and when uh, uh, we want right. So, let us uh, do some examples ok. So, I am going to draw block diagrams and also like uh, write things in a methodical manner you know like uh, I would strongly suggest that you also follow that ok. So, that like uh, we just uh, follow a template it is not necessary, but uh, that way we will make sure that we do not make any uh, simple mistakes right. So, let us say you know like uh, we are given a plant transfer function uh, which is 1 by s minus 1 right. Let us say p of s is 1 divided by s minus 1 right. So, what is the order of the system order of the plant? first order plant right, right. So, is it stable or unstable? Unstable, unstable. why? Uh, since uh, it has a pole at s equals 1 is its pole right, ok. So, the pole is in the right of complex plane. So, obviously, uh, the uh, stability is not lost, uh, stability is not there right. And one uh, purpose of feedback is also to uh, ensure that we stabilize an unstable system ok to begin with ok. So, that is also like one reason why we design uh, closed loop control systems with feedback ok. So, uh, let us try to uh, design a uh, closed loop negative feedback unity negative feedback system ok. So, uh, as uh, a common uh, what to say uh, condition for all these examples. Let us consider it is not uh, what to say always uh, necessary, but here it is we consider let us consider uh, the design of a unity negative feedback closed loop. control system ok. So, that is what uh, we are going to do ok. So, uh, let us say you know like uh, let we want to design the system right. So, what we do is the following. So, this is uh, y of s ok and the input to the plant is u of s right. So, so let us say I have a reference input r of s. So, what we do is the following. So, I close the loop ok unity uh, feedback means uh, unit uh, sorry this is not unit sorry unity please correct it ok. So, this is the consider let us consider the design of a unity negative feedback ok not unit negative feedback ok unity negative feedback. So, I hope it is clear what those adjectives means right before feedback if I put unity that means h of s is 1 right negative feedback means at the summing junction I am subtracting these two signals ok. So, that is what uh, it means right. So, let us say you know like I I have an error measure then I need to have the controller transfer function here ok. So, that is what we have. So, p of s is uh, 1 by s minus 1 right. Uh, we are given that uh, h of s is equal to 1 ok. So, now uh, let us try a proportional controller to begin with. Right. So, and then see where whether it works or not ok. So, as a first step let us try proportional control. So, uh, this implies that uh, g of s is going to be equal to c of s times uh, p of s and that is going to be equal to k p divided by s minus 1 right. Do you agree ok. So, this implies that the closed loop transfer function which is nothing but y of s divided by r of s that is going to be equal to g of s divided by uh, 1 plus g of s h of s 
and that is going to be equal to k p divided by s minus 1 divided by 1 plus k p divided by s minus 1 right because h of s is 1 ok. So, that is what we do and if we simplify this what will we get? We would get k p divided by s plus k p minus 1 ok. So, this is the closed loop transfer function ok and how do I uh, find the closed loop poles? I need to find the poles of the closed loop transfer function. So, I look at the denominator polynomial of the closed loop transfer function that is what is called as the closed loop characteristic polynomial right and then I have to solve what is called as the closed loop characteristic equation right which is the denominator polynomial equal to 0 right to figure out what will be the uh, what to say uh, poles of the closed loop transfer function right. So, this implies that the closed uh, loop characteristic uh, equation uh, which is given by s plus k p minus 1 equals 0 ok. If I solve this we immediately see that the closed loop pole is going to be at s equals 1 minus k p ok. So, this implies that for closed loop stability ok. Uh, in other words stability of the closed loop system ok. What we call as closed loop stability means it is stability of uh, the closed loop system. For closed loop stability what should happen? See, I want all my closed loop poles to be strictly in the left of complex plane. So, I want there is only one pole obviously, it is a real number because k p is a real number right. I want that to be negative right on the negative real axis. So, when will that be negative k p is greater than 1. So, we see that you know like we have found the range of k p which will essentially uh, achieve stability of the uh, closed loop system right. So, this is a very simple example. So, if I want to draw the uh, controller parameter space now, so this is just uh, uh, how we draw this right. So, essentially I draw k p let us say this is 0 and let us say this is 1 right. What is the feasible region? It is all this region to the right of 1 ok k p greater than 1 is my feasible region ok. That is just a graphical representation of uh, what is a feasible region ok. So, this is the controller parameter space for this example ok. So, it gives us ok what values of k p can I choose and uh, the, now the question arises ok uh, how is this analysis useful right because just imagine that you know like you have a machine or system you know which has this transfer function right. So, uh, let us say you know like by this analysis however approximate it is what have we done? We have converted a parameter which can essentially take a value between minus infinity to plus infinity into a parameter whose range is between 1 and <laughs> infinity right. At least we have narrowed down the range ok. So, so that we do not accidentally choose a value that might make the un system unstable right. So, let us say you know like you give me this plant and you ask me to make sure that I design a feedback system and uh, stabilize it ok. Without this analysis let us say I have a system and then I, I program k p equals minus 10 what will happen? The closed loop system would be unstable right, but at least rather than uh, doing that blind trial and error method at least through this approximate analysis I have figured out that ok let me choose a value of k p which is greater than 1 at least I am assured that you know in the presence of all these approximate analysis you know at least k p greater than 1 would give me closed loop stability. And we would later see that if I uh, want to incorporate closed loop performance this band will even reduce further ok. So, then what for example you know like this band may be reduced uh, now the range is between 1 to infinity right it may reduce to 1 to let us say 95. So, at least like I have a narrow range to work with ok. Then I go to the experimental system and tune right and then I have to fine tune my 
gains okay that 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 step is all uh, what to say is a final step which we always need to do okay because we remember that you know like all the analysis that we are doing is all uh, approximate right so we are approximating the practical system as a linear time invariant system and then doing all this uh, analysis right so uh, we have to give some tolerance to those approximations okay